name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. May we celebrate the feast day of Saints Pontian and Apollotus, and let us begin by calling to mind all of our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the, prom, may the precious long-suffering of the just, O Lord, we pray, bring us a great increase of love for you, and always prompt in our hearts constancy in the holy faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Now, son of man, during the day while they are looking on, prepare your baggage as though to, for exile. And again while they are looking on, migrate from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will see that they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage like an exile in, in the daytime while they are looking on. In the evening, again while they are looking on, you shall go out like one of those driven into exile. While they look on, dig a hole in the wall and pass through it. While they look on, shoulder the burden and set out in the darkness. Cover your face that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did as I was told. During the day I brought out my baggage as though it were that of an exile. And at evening I dug a hole through the wall with my hand, and while they looked on, set out in the darkness, shouldering my burden. Then, in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, did not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, ask you what you were doing? Tell them, thus says the Lord God, this oracle concerns Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel within it. I am a sign for you, as I have done, so it will be done to them. As captives, they shall go into exile. The prince who is among them shall shoulder his burden and set out in the darkness, going through a hole that he has dug in the wall, and covering his face, lest he be seen by anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks God. God. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not, Do not forget the works of the Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God the Most High and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were faithless like their fathers. They recoiled like a treacherous bow. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They angered him with their high places and with their idols roused his jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do not forget the works of the Lord. And he surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory in the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged against his inheritance. Do not forget the works of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. 
When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You're preaching? Yeah. You're oh, go ahead. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, debts are no fun. Um, nobody wants debts. Nobody wants a huge mortgage payment or lots of student loans or massive credit card bills, right? Nobody wants debts. And wouldn't it be great if all our debts were just wiped away in an instant, in just a single act of mercy, all our debts were canceled? I mean, what would our reaction be? Shock or disbelief? This is too good to be true. How can it happen? Well, even God's mercy might seem too good to be true, right? The, um, it's just remarkable what, what God, his mercy is limitless. And the Catechism puts it very plainly uh, in paragraph 982, for those of you who are scoring the game at home. There is no offense, however serious, that the church cannot forgive. No offense. And so long as we seek forgiveness with a contrite heart, there's no limit to mer the mercy of God. No limit at all. And, you know, God's mercy is so deep. Some people, and we all know this, and it may have happened to us, don't even want to ask for forgiveness because they think what I did was way too terrible. I mean, okay, God's good and all that, but... That was really bad. There's nothing, nothing that should ever keep us or anyone from asking for God's mercy. But the catch here is sometimes we don't recognize our sins. Um, the Israelites in the first reading, uh, what were they called? Uh, a rebellious house. So sometimes we have trouble seeing ourselves as the rebellious house that we are. And this recognition of our sins is also a gift from God. He opens our eyes so we can see when we do need to seek help from him and to seek his healing mercy. Uh, once we've recognized our needs for God's mercy, then we can look to the debtor in the gospel. And uh, he gives us an example. He gives us an example of what to do next. He simply asks for mercy. And or if you happen to hear my homily from this weekend, you know, Lord, save me. He asks. And again, Jesus is teaching us to ask for his mercy. And this, this is the heart of Jesus. He's our compassionate king. He's the one who surprises us with the unfathomable depth of his mercy. That's who he is. As soon as we ask, again, if you heard this weekend, as soon as we ask, immediately, God's mercy begins. So, uh, the mercy of God, though, doesn't stop with Jesus. 
He's very merciful. He's our merciful Lord. Uh, but we're called to be mercy in this world today. We're, uh, you know, when, when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Seven? He said, no, 77. What Jesus was doing, he was challenging Peter to the same astounding level of mercy that he himself gives. And he's challenging us to that same level of unfathomable, endless, bottomless mercy to the people in our world and to the people in our lives. The truth is we're all sinners, right? And there's no way we can cancel our, the debt of our sin on our own. It's impossible to do. But thanks be to God, we're, there is hope. Uh, the good news of the gospel is that Jesus died on the cross to wipe away the debt of all of our sin. It's done. It's done. But it's up to us to participate in it. And the whole world should know this mercy of Jesus and this mercy of God. So as we receive Jesus' presence in the Eucharist here in just a few minutes, let's remember that we're also receiving an abundance, an abundance of his mercy, and that we're called to share that mercy every day with the whole world, that mercy that's so abundant that it overflows to us. And we all know that our world needs this mercy right now. We need the mercy right now. Amen. I just, I'm just going to say the exact same thing. But, <laughs> but I, I wanted to just add one little piece. The two saints of today, Ponchin and Apollotus, completely embody this gospel. Ponchin was Pope. This is in the third century, I believe. Hippolytus was a theologian and bishop who was his thorn in his side. They did not get along. Um, Punchin uh, excommunicated Hippolytus at one time. There was some heresies running around at the time, and, and Hippolytus was advocating this that Punchin didn't care for. And so they were two men really at odds. Well, Punchin ended up um, abdicating the papacy. He was actually the very first pope to resign the papacy at that time. He was arrested by the officials and sent into exile in Sardinia, in the salt mines, that's what they used to do in those days, where he found a fellow prisoner, Hippolytus, his dire enemy. The two became reconciled, died, martyr's death together as friends. So I think it shows you the, uh, the great gift of mercy that can come in, in all situations, even in our own situations. So let us stay. I was going to say that too. But you were going to say that. <laughs> let us. Assured by the compassion and mercy of God, we offer our prayers today. That the Lord may help all members of the church grow in compassion and forgiveness of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civic leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their efforts to care for the communities they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose sins separate them from loved ones may receive the grace of God for repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our faith community, guided by the teaching of Jesus, may continue to grow in charity and hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may find peace and eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you know our sins and all the. All, all the are from you. In your mercy, hear the prayers we bring before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become our, for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and your all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you, we, that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, Jorge, as auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saints Pontian and Apollotus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together now let us pray as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my word, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just had several announcements before. First of all, we do not have adoration tomorrow on Friday because the staff is on retreat and the office is closed, so we won't have adoration. Um, we will probably have Mass in here. Um, we're not really sure on that. Um, also, I just want to remind you, too, of uh, people have been asking about Saturday as the Holy Day of Obligation. If you say I just want to remind you, over 20 years ago, the church changed the law, and if a Holy Day of Obligation falls on a Saturday or a Monday, the obligation to attend is dispensed for that obligation. That's because Saturday and Monday wreak havoc with funerals and weddings and weekend mass schedules and all that. So because the Holy Day falls on Sunday, Saturday this year, it is dispensed this year. 
please do not go to confession and confess that you didn't get to the holy day, okay? In that same spirit, I want to remind you as well that the obligation to attend Sunday Mass has been given, uh, has been suspended as well. That is by the Pope himself, and it is until further notice. So I just want to remind you of that. Bishops have, have reiterated that to their own folks as well. So again, don't go to confession and confess that you've missed Mass. If you choose not to attend Mass because of illness or, or, or for a variety of reasons, you are dispensed during this period of time, and that will change, and we'll let you know when that changes. Um, also, we will, though, have a Saturday morning Mass in honor of the Assumption here at the church. It may be here, it may be in the church. <laughs> so we'll see. If it's here, it's limited in number. So just to let you know that as well. Um, hopefully we can get that information out uh, by flock note to let you know about Saturday, the possibility. And if you'd like to attend here, of course, you're more than welcome to attend for the feast, but you're not obligated to attend for the feast. So, no. Go to the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.